In this video, we want to just review a little bit of some of the things Lobital can do for us. We also want to uh, um, begin to look at the difference between sequences and series and look at the first of our convergence tests. Uh, in this case, we've got the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x over the square root of x. So if you think about plugging infinity in, you're going to get infinity on top and infinity on the bottom. So uh, we are certainly able to use L'Hopital's rule. So if I found the derivative of the top, derivative of uh, natural log of x, of course, is 1 over x, and the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square roots of x. Now, this doesn't help us a heck of a lot, uh, but we can do, I mean, in this form, but we can do a little bit of algebra. So let me rewrite this. Got x going to infinity, 1 over x. Now, instead of dividing by uh, 1 over 2 square roots of x, let me multiply by the reciprocal. Like that. Okay. So this becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over the square root of x, which is 0. Okay, so we, we could have, um, I guess, continued with L'Hopital. It wouldn't have really helped uh, to keep going uh, that much, but we did it once, right? We got the derivative of the top, 1 over x, derivative of the bottom, 1 over 2 square roots of x, and then through a little algebra and rearranging it, uh, we were able to simplify it to something that we didn't need L'Hopital for because as the denominator here gets bigger and bigger, we approach 0. Okay, looking at the second one, uh, 3 to the you know, infinity, it's obviously getting big, as is the denominator. And I hope you have a sense that the top is getting bigger faster, so maybe you have some idea already of what's going to happen. But again, this is a situation we could use L'Hopital's rule to kind of verify. The derivative of 3 to the x is... The natural log of 3 multiplied by 3 to the x. Can to remember your rules there. The derivative here is 2x plus 1. Well, now if I plug in infinity, I still get infinity over infinity. So let me just kind of continue my scratch work here. Uh, the derivative of the bottom would just be 2. The derivative of the top, well, natural log of 3 is just a... a um, a constant, but the derivative of 3 to the x would be, again, natural log of 3 times 3 to the x. So it would become the natural log of 3 squared times 3 to the x. So let me just rewrite what I have here after doing L'Hopital's rule twice. Uh, I've got the limit as x approaches infinity. The natural log of 3 squared multiplied by 3 to the x over 2. And hopefully you can tell now that as I plug in a larger and larger values, I'm going to end up with you know something on the numerator that's getting very large, and the bottom's just two, so it's infinity. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule helps us uh, verify some things that, that were hard to think about. I mean, in this case, I think you know we maybe have a sense here that that while they're both getting big, the natural log of x is getting big faster. Maybe we have a sense of that, but it's hard to just assume that. Uh, and L'Hopital's rule helps us verify that. Now, we want to start talking about the difference between sequences and series. A series is simply the pattern of numbers that we've been describing. For instance, you know, 1 over n plus 1, if we start at n equals 1, for instance, um, you know, if we start there, then we have 1 over 1 times 2. Our next term is 1 over 2 times 3. Our next term is 1 over 3 times 4, and so on. Okay, This is a sequence. It's the pattern. A series is the sum of that pattern. So a series would be 1 over 1 times 2 plus 1 over 2 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 4, and so on to infinity. Now, much like sequences, what we're looking for is, does a series converge? Meaning, as we add up these terms, at some point, does, that, does what we're adding get so small 
that we never reach a certain uh, a certain term as a sum. So as we add up these terms, you know, like this first uh, term here, one half plus one sixth plus one twelfth plus one twentieth plus, and so on. At some point, will what we're adding on become so small that maybe we never reach a certain term as our sum? Uh, and that's what we're looking at here. That's the difference between a sequence and a series. The sequence is a pattern. The series is an infinite sum. And we're still looking for convergence. Okay? They are different. Just because a, series con a sequence converges does not mean its series converges. Which brings us to our first convergence test. Now, we are going to look at quite a few different tests here for convergence and deciding if a series converges. I think this one is maybe the most obvious and, and easiest. The idea here is that if a sequence that corresponds to the series doesn't have a limit of zero, then the series diverges. Okay, so I want you to just think, when I say it corresponds, you know, the corresponding sequence here is n over n plus 1. We just kind of ignore that, uh, that first... Um, the, the sum notation. So our first term, you know, would be 1 over 2, and then our next term would be 2 over 3, and then 3 over 4, and so on. And I hope you look at this, you use your rules from even pre-calc, and you say, boy, this thing, this has a limit of 1. You know, same power on top and bottom, we use the coefficients. Well, remembering that a series is a sum, as we go on and on and on, we begin to add these terms together with one half plus two thirds plus three fourths plus four fifths plus five sixths. Sooner, you know, not sooner or later, but at the end of that, as, as it gets larger and larger, we're adding essentially one every time. Well, if we just keep adding one every time, then our sum will just keep growing infinitely. So because our sum doesn't end up somewhere, it doesn't approach a number, it just keeps growing, we say that this series diverges. Okay, So anytime the sequence has a limit that's not zero, and remember the limit of this particular sequence is one, anytime that happens uh, we end up with a divergent series. Unfortunately, there's no way to prove convergence with this. All this does for us is say, does it diverge? And if we can't prove that it diverges, we are going to end up having to do more work. Let me show you this one other example. Uh, 3 to the n plus n over n squared plus 1. Now again, I hope you look at this and say, boy, I, you know, if I start thinking about this as a limit, you know, if I do the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the n plus n, it sure feels like the top is going to get big and the bottom is, is also going to get big but not as big. And you're right, we could use Lobital to verify it, you know, do the derivative. Uh, you know, do it again. Um, I'm kind of running out of room here, but you see that it is going to grow without bound. This limit is infinity because the top gets bigger and bigger and the bottom now is just two. And what this again says is we're adding up huge numbers, right? In, in this first example, we were essentially just one half, two thirds, three fourths, blah, 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 blah. But after a while, we are essentially adding one because that's the limit. As this thing goes, as the sequence goes to infinity, it becomes almost one, so the sum says, oh, we're just adding one every time. Well, if we're adding one every time, the sum will just keep getting bigger. Well, here, the sequence has a limit of infinity, so we're just adding larger and larger and larger numbers, and therefore, the sum would diverge. Okay, so again, uh, this is the divergence test. There's no way to prove something converges with this. We can only prove divergence.